does memory work? How can you improve your memory? We'll answer these questions and show you a few tools to help improve your memory. Welcome to Sophia the Adventurer, the channel where we explore the amazing world of science, nature, and fun. I'm Sonia, your host and guide, and today we're going to learn about how memory works. Memory is a very important part of our brains that helps us remember things. But how does it work? And how can we improve it? Let's find out. Memory is not just one thing, it's actually a process that involves different parts of our brains. When we see, hear, or experience something, our brain decides if it's important enough to keep in our memory file. If it is, it goes through three stages, encoding, storage, and recall. Encoding is when our brain takes in information and holds it in short-term memory. This is like a temporary folder on your computer that only keeps things for a few seconds or minutes. For example, when you look at a phone number, you encode it in your short-term memory until you dial it or write it down. But if you don't pay attention to it or repeat it, you might forget it soon. You can remember from four to nine things in your short-term memory. Storage is when our brain transfers information from short-term memory to long-term memory. This is like a permanent folder on your computer that keeps things for a long time. For example, when you learn your name, birthday, or address, you store it in your long-term memory, so you can remember it later. Long-term memory has two kinds of files, episodic and semantic. Episodic memory is where we store our personal experiences and feelings. This is like a photo album or a diary that records what happened to us and how we felt about it. For example, when you think about your last birthday party, you might remember who was there, what you ate, what gifts you received and how happy you were. That's episodic memory. Semantic memory is where we store facts and general knowledge. This is like an encyclopedia or a dictionary that contains information about the world. For example, when you think about the capital of France, the colors of the rainbow or the names of the planets, you use semantic memory. This is the main type of memory we use for school. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you can remember what something looks like, even if you only saw it for a very short time? For example, if you look at a picture of a cat and then close your eyes, you might still see the cat in your mind for a moment. That's because your brain has a special kind of memory that holds information from your senses, like what you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. This kind of memory is called sensory memory. Sensory memory is very fast and very brief. It only lasts for less than one second after you perceive something. That means that as soon as you stop looking at the cat, your sensory memory of it will fade away. You can't control sensory memory or make it last longer. It's something that your brain does automatically to help you process the information from your senses. Recall is when our brain finds information that's stored in long-term memory and brings it back to short-term memory. This is like opening a file on your computer and looking at its contents. For example, when someone asks you what you did yesterday, what 2 plus 2 equals, or who wrote Harry Potter, you recall the information from your long-term memory and say it out loud or write it down. There's another part of our brain that works with all these stages of memory. It's called working memory. Working memory is like a workbench where we hold and manipulate information for a short time. For example, when you do mental math, follow directions or play a game, you use working memory to keep track of what you're doing and what comes next. Now that we know how memory works, let's see how we can improve it. Here are some tips and tricks to help you remember better. Pay attention. The first step to remembering something is to pay attention to it. If you're distracted or bored, your brain won't encode the information well. So try to focus on what you want to remember and avoid things that might distract you, like noise, TV, or your phone. Repeat. The second step to remembering something is to repeat it. The more times you repeat something, the more likely it will go from short-term memory to long-term memory. So try to say it out loud, write it down, or quiz yourself on it until you know it by heart. Organize. The third step to remembering something is to organize it. If you group information into categories or patterns, your brain will have an easier time storing and recalling it. So try to make lists, charts, diagrams, or mnemonics, memory aids, to help you remember things better. Associate. The fourth step to remembering something 
is to associate it with something else. If you link information to something you already know or something that's meaningful to you, your brain will have more cues to recall it later. So try to relate new information to old information, personal experiences, images, sounds, or emotions. Review. The fifth step to remembering something is to review it periodically. If you don't use information for a long time, your brain might forget it or mix it up with other information. So, try to refresh your memory by going over what you learned every once in a while. Mnemonics are tricks or tools that help us remember things better. They can be words, sentences, songs, images, or anything else that makes it easier to recall information. For example, When you want to remember the order of the planets in the solar system, you can use a mnemonic like this. My very eager mother just served us noodles. This sentence helps you remember the first letter of each planet. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. There are many types of mnemonics that you can use for different purposes. Here are some examples of mnemonics that may be helpful. To remember the colors of the rainbow, You can use the name Roy G. Biv. This name stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. To remember how many days are in each month, you can use your knuckles. Make a fist and count the knuckles and the spaces between them. The knuckles have 31 days and the spaces have 30 days, except for February. Start with January on your left hand and end with December on your right hand. Here is another example of a mnemonic in the form of a poem for how many days are in each month. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February. To remember how to spell words that sound the same but have different meanings, you can use rhymes or sentences. I, before E, except after C. Or when sounded like A, as in neighbor and way. This rule helps you spell words like peace and receive correctly. There is no X in espresso. This sentence helps you avoid a common spelling mistake. To remember the names of the Great Lakes in North America, you can use the word homes. This word stands for Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. These are just some examples of mnemonics that you can use to improve your memory and learning. You can also make your own mnemonics by using your creativity and imagination. The more fun and personal they are, the better they will work for you. To sum up what we learned today, memory is not just one thing, it's a process that involves different parts of our brains. Encoding is when we take in information and hold it in short-term memory for a little bit. Storage is when we transfer information from short-term memory to long-term memory where it stays. Recall is when we find information. That's stored in long-term memory and bring it back to short-term memory. Working memory is when we hold and manipulate information for a short time while we do something with it. To improve our memory, we can pay attention, repeat, organize, associate, and review. And then we'll remember things better. That's true. Please like this video and subscribe to Sophia the Adventurer if you like fun and educational videos.